So you're thinking about buying a no-till drill for your food plots? Come on into our shop today. We're gonna go through the Great Plains 606 NT, and we're gonna compare that to the Genesis HD8. Couple things just before we get started here. We aren't sponsored by either one of these companies. We have no skin in this game. Uh, we have put a lot of acres on both of these drills. I would suspect we've put more acres on both of these drills than most guys would put on their drills in a lifetime of use. So the Great Plains, we've had a little bit longer. We're probably pushing 900 to 1,000 acres on this drill. The Genesis was in the, in the field for one year. Uh, we just started using that drill this past year. We've put uh, three to 400 acres on that drill. So. We have extensive amount of use on them. Um, we've got them in the shop for routine maintenance right now. We've got them in various degrees of being taken apart so we can show you uh, exactly what we like and where the areas of improvements are uh, on both drills and some things that you can do preventatively um, to help you uh, as you start using them and make them work a little bit better for you long term. So the first question we get a lot when it comes to getting yourself a drill is what size tractor do I need? And a lot of people will say, well, I have a 60 horsepower or a 50 horsepower or whatever the case may be. The one thing I want to emphasize here is it's not so much the horsepower of your tractor as it is the lift capacity of the rear end. These drills are heavy, so they're going to run anywhere from you know, 2,000 to 3,500 pounds. And if the rear end of your tractor can't pick it up, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So here we've got a New Holland Power Star 90. We actually have added to the lift capacity on this tractor. They actually make a kit to increase the capacity by about twofold. This is a 90 horsepower tractor. It picks up both of those drills, no problem. We also have a John Deere 5090 um, in the other side of the shed over here, and we use that tractor as well. That tractor does not have the same lift capacity as this one does, and it doesn't have the option to add on, so we have to run the smaller drill uh, or the lighter drill on that tractor. So keep in mind that when you're looking at your tractor, it's not so much the horsepower as it is the rear end lift capacity that your tractor can handle. Okay, so let's take a minute to compare the weight distribution of the Genesis HD8 versus the Great Plains 606. These drills are roughly about the same weight. This one might be just a bit heavier. And when we're looking at just raw weight, that's one thing, but you also have to look at how that weight is distributed. So on this drill, we're gonna measure the length of this drill. And this drill from the back end out to the front of the hitch is about 44 inches. So this drill is really compact, which means most of that weight is going to be closer to the tractor. You're not gonna have quite as much leverage on the back end of the tractor. You're not gonna put as much stress on your machine for the same amount of weight. So this weight is distributed a little bit closer together um, and a little bit closer to the tractor. Okay, so we've moved over to the Great Plains 606. Just as a comparison to that Genesis drill, this drill here um, is about 2,800 pounds empty, uh, but the, the weight distribution on this drill is significantly different than the Genesis. So if I pull this out from the back of the drill and I measure this out to the hitch, uh, we're just uh, a hair over six feet on this drill. This drill is two feet longer than that Genesis, it puts way more weight to the back end of this drill. It's gonna put a lot more leverage on the back end of your tractor, gonna create a lot more stress. So make sure that if you're looking at the Great Plains drill, you understand that it is longer. You do need a little more lift capacity in your tractor to handle it. Okay, so let's take you on a tour front to back of both of these drills and hit the key components. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to look at is how that seed gets to the ground. And that seed is getting to the ground via a drive wheel. So the drive wheel system on both of these drills is really different. The Great Plains drill is a single drive wheel. It's positioned in the middle um, of the unit. It's got an exposed chain. We like having the chain right here so you can see everything. If something slips off or you break a chain or something, it's really easy to get at. When you get down to the tire itself, this tire actually plays a role in the depth of the front cutting coulter. So this tire is adjustable up and down. Um, the further down that you move that tire, will bring your cutting coulter shallower, but it also puts a lot more stress on this tire. So one recommendation that we would have for you is if you're looking at this drill, as soon as you get it, get your tire to a tire shop, get that thing foam filled so that you don't blow that tire. We have blown a few tires uh, on this drill. This is actually a replacement that we're working on getting um, taken care of here this winter. Um, but we have had some issues um, when we haven't foam filled the tires with blowing tires. The other thing that's really important to understand on this drill is that it's a center mounted drive wheel. We have had issues with the center mounted drive wheel, especially in hilly country, because the drill wants to rotate 
around that center drive wheel. So if you're on a hillside, what a lot of times what will happen is the weight of the drill will carry down the hill and it will leave your outside row units or your uphill row units out of the ground and you're laying seed on top of the ground. We haven't found a good way to adjust for that simply because the entire unit wants to rotate uh, around that drive wheel. So if you're in really hilly country, really an important consideration, especially if you're looking at a narrower drill like this five foot model, because you can have trouble keeping those high side uh, row units in the ground and you'll start leaving seed uh, on the top. Overall, a pretty solid design, um, but again, understand where those limitations are. Get that foam filled tire and make sure you understand um, how it's gonna work in hilly country. Okay, so let's take a comparison look at the Genesis uh, HD8 drive wheel system. It is significantly different than that Great Plains. If you look, first and foremost, you're gonna see this drive wheel is on the side of the unit. So right away, you're gonna see, you're going to avoid that tilting and pivoting um, around the center drive wheel. We like that, uh, we like that a lot. Uh, the other piece um, that we like um, on this is that as you're on the hillside, there is a spring-mounted uh, mechanism in there that if you are on a hill, that uphill side will allow that tire to drop down, maintain contact, and you're never going to lose uh, the planting depth that you've got um, if you're planting in hill country. So uh, we like that a lot uh, as well. One drawback to this is the chain and the drive unit is all contained inside this box and it's completely covered up. So it makes it really hard to see if you skip a chain or, or something like that um, along the way. Kind of our solution to that is actually on the other side of the drill, we painted a mark on the drive shaft itself and we actually put a remote camera with a screen back in the cab. We bought it online for 150 bucks so that inside the cab you can always see the shaft rotating so that you never have to worry about, geez, if I skip a chain and I can't see it, um, how do I know if I'm planting or not? So we did put a remote camera on this um, to kind of solve that issue. Um, but I will say overall, uh, we've had that, uh, that uh, Great Plains drill for about three seasons. We just ran our first season with this. I would say we like the drive wheel configuration better um, on the Genesis drill. Um, it allows to maintain uh, planting consistency. We haven't had uh, chain skipping issues uh, in, in those types of things and it maintains ground contact really well. All right, so let's move back a little bit further on the drill and get to these front end cutting coulters and give you a little bit of a comparison here. Um, I'm sitting here in front of the, the Great Plains drill. Um, this is their front end cutting coulter system. I can tell you this is the third season that we've completed with this drill. We've done nothing to this front end uh, cutting coulter system on the Great Plains drill other than replace a few of the cutting wheels that just showed normal wear and tear. Really, um, a really good high quality system um, that we've had very few issues with. The Genesis uh, drill front cutting coulter system on the other hand um, really hasn't performed well at all. In fact, we're really quite disappointed with it even after one season. What I have down here on the floor in front of me is actually the entirety of, a, of one cutting coulter arm because we've had to disassemble all 13 rows to do some pretty significant replacements um, and maintenance after about 300 acres on this drill. So let me just kind of point out where we found some of the weaknesses to be. Uh, first and foremost is the overall size of the cutting wheel. So this is the actual cutting wheel itself. Hasn't been very durable. Um, this one is pretty beat up. You can kind of probably see it in here. We've actually had to straighten these out um, throughout the season to get them to, to, to perform. Um, but because of the size of these wheels being so small, if you compare it to the, uh, to the Great Plains, it's less than half the diameter. Um, they really take a beating. They don't cut through things uh, as, well as, as well as they should. Um, and uh, they don't bear, perform very well in the rocks either. Second thing that we see that's a key component to a lot of these systems is the spring system that allows that cutting wheel to take up some of the abuse that it's going to have in a no-till situation. So if I look at the spring system on the Great Plains, this spring is about a 300 pound spring, I believe. It's about 12 inches long. It takes all the abuse uh, you want to give it. Let's compare that. This is the actual spring that we've taken out of the, the Genesis drill. Um, there's really not much to it. We actually broke three of these springs in one season. They're kind of a pain in the butt to change once, uh, once they do break. They didn't hold up very well. Um, and uh, we just weren't very, uh, very impressed with it. Last thing I want to touch on here, um, as we look at uh, the system itself, over here uh, on this side, this is all the bearing housings um, for uh, each individual uh, cutting wheel. We took these all apart, nine of the 13 cutting wheels, the bearings are completely shot. Again, we've never had to change a bearing um, in, the, uh, in the Great Plains. So, disappointed in that. We're gonna have a lot of maintenance um, into uh, this cutting wheel system. 
This is an option on the Genesis drill. It's about a $3,000 option um, on the drill that we bought. We're probably going to likely have close to $1,000 in parts to fix this after one season. So we're pretty disappointed um, with the cutting uh, front end cutting wheels on the Genesis drill. Not nearly as beefy, not nearly as durable as what you're going to get uh, on the Great Plains. So outside of just the general durability uh, of the drill, the design itself is quite a bit different as well. Um, the Great Plains um, rides quite a bit higher off the ground. Um, the wheels are quite a bit bigger, it cuts a lot more material. If you get into that Genesis drill, those cutting wheels are riding so close to the ground and they're angled at, in, in a way that as you're going through things like standing corn, um, especially standing corn, if you've got any kind of ground that's been tilled at all, they plug up really, really easily. And we have run that drill every way to Sunday, whether we run it high, whether we run it low. We've got hydraulic top links uh, on all the tractors so we can tilt them back, we can tilt them forward. We've had that thing in the ground for over 300 acres and have not found a way to run that drill in corn stubble or any kind of ground that's been worked at all without that drill plugging up pretty badly. Okay, so we're gonna move back a little bit further into the drill. We're gonna take a look at the actual disc openers. On both of these units, they're gonna be a little harder to see. So you can see on the, on the Genesis here, we have all the cutting coulters off of this drill um, right now um, because we are doing those repairs on them. But as you look back in here, the disc openers on both drills is pretty much the same setup. It's a dual disc opener. They're both the same size. One difference between them, Genesis um, uses about a three mil um, thickness on their disc openers. They do bend and chip a little more readily than you're gonna see on the Great Plains, which are a five mil disc opener. Um, so that is a little bit different uh, between the two units. Um, but otherwise, the setup is, is pretty, much, uh, pretty much the same. One thing that I do want to point out on the Genesis that we really like is the compactness of the drill. We talked about this being a little bit shorter, but one of the prices you pay to have a compact drill is those disc openers are a little bit harder to get at. So actually on these disc openers, um, they are actually physically inside of um, the row unit arm itself. So a little bit harder to get at. So when you do um, have a bearing go out, like we have had on this unit, um, we have had some bearings go out. We have had a couple bearings go out on the uh, Great Plains as well. So I don't want to say that um, that isn't uh, similar, but you can see on the inside of here, we've got uh, a kind of a rattle going on. And once we have to get these out um, of, uh, of where they're at to get them replaced, it's a little bit harder. I'm going to have to drop that row unit down. It's a little bit more finger pinching going on in there. It's a little bit harder to get at. All right, for comparison's sake, we'll just take a quick look at the disc openers here on the Great Plains. As I mentioned, these are a little bit more accessible um, because they are not contained within the, the row unit uh, itself. They're actually below it, so you can get at all the bolts and, and whatnot. It is a dual disc opener system. Um, it is a five mil disc opener, so these are much heavier. They don't uh, seem um, to wear out quite as fast as you're gonna see uh, on the Genesis drill. Um, but we have had to replace some bearings um, on this one, so that isn't, uh, isn't unique. Um, we, the bearings are a little bit easier to get at because they're on the outside here, but by and large, the systems work um, pretty much the same um, between the two. Um, I would say, uh, in this case, uh, not a lot of difference. Okay, so we moved around to the back end of this Genesis drill, and you want to take a look at the press wheels or the closing wheels and compare these on, on each of these units. So the press wheels themselves are, are really good. They're high quality wheels. They're a solid wheel. They're nice and heavy. They do a nice job of closing the seed trench. Really no issues there at all. The one issue that we did have um, with these was right out of the box, we discovered that these come shipped with no grease and these have to be greased. So we decided we'd you know, obviously follow the directions and put some grease in it. If you look at the directions, I believe they say 15 to 20 pumps of grease um, in those and you know, every, and I can't remember how many hours it is, but it's, you know, they say 15 to 20 pumps of grease uh, to get that started. We were actually putting 100 to 120 pumps of grease in each one of these. The, the reality is we were using more grease on this drill than we use on our dozer to keep that thing greased on a daily basis. So uh, we couldn't quite figure out what was going on with that. So what we did is we actually took one of the press wheels apart. So this is the actual wheel itself. Like I said, it's a solid, solid wheel. It's a you know, high quality piece. But the hub um, is a little bit different story. So these hubs come and it's a two part hub. So this hub comes in two parts and they get riveted together just like this. So that's how they come. Well, when you take it apart and look on the inside, 
there's an entire cavity in here where that bearing just sits and the shaft goes through here and the bearing just free floats. And that entire thing has to get filled with grease. So you can see the grease circus here and as that fills up, the centrifugal force wants to push that grease to the outside away from the bearing. And then further, when you, when you start to really look at it, once this is bolted together, there's actually a seam in there and there's gaps in that seam for the grease to get out into the hub itself. So these things really went through a lot of grease. And by the end of the season, we had actually gone through bearings, I think on nine of the 13 wheels. So we are in the process of actually deconstructing all of the wheels. We're gonna take all the rivets out, um, when we put them back together, we're gonna use bolts um, to put the wheel back together. And we are looking for a replacement bearing um, that is sealed that can go in there. So hopefully get a little bit more longevity. So we're gonna be looking for some replacement bearings. Hopefully we can find something that'll work. We've got a line on a couple different ones uh, that we're gonna give a try. We'll put those back together. Hopefully we'll get better results um, with the bearings when we do that because the wheel itself does do a really nice job and closes uh, seed trenches really well. Okay, so we've moved over to the back end here of the Great Plains drill. We're gonna look at the press wheels here. Um, again, a really high quality wheel itself. It's a little bit bigger wheel, um, but again, it's a solid one piece wheel. Really, I don't think there's much difference between the wheel uh, itself and the quality of the wheel between the Great Plains uh, and the Genesis. One thing that you do get with the Great Plains is you get a little more variety and options of press wheels, and, and that's important um, when you start looking at different size seeds. So the wheels that are on the machine right now, we've actually just changed these out so it's getting ready for springtime planting, and these are the wheels that we use uh, to plant soybeans. And this is a, a concave wheel that actually gathers material to the center of the wheel to make sure that you've got that seed uh, well covered as you're going through and, and planting. Works really good for soybeans and, and some of the larger seeds. Um, but you don't want to use that wheel uh, you know, when you're planting smaller seeds. So if we're planting a brassica crop or we're planting some of the cereal grains, clovers, those types of things, we'll actually change that press wheel um, and change it over um, to a convex wheel that has a seam down the middle. And this wheel um, just basically is pressing uh, that seed just right into the top layer uh, of soil and does a really good job of setting seed bed um, on some of the smaller seeds. So you do get a little bit more variety with Great Plains. Um, this is not a standard um, on the 606. We actually had to order this. Um, it's in actually in a product catalog for some of their bigger drills. Um, so, uh, but they are available and they do fit um, on this drill. The only other thing I would mention here as we, we, we finish up on the Great Plains, um, they did solve the bearing issue because there is no bearing to, to deal with on this press wheel like there is on the, on the Genesis. It's just simply a bolt that bolts into um, this arm. So, you know, that's a little bit easier, but you do have the issues um, or can have the issues, I should say, with this arm on here um, because if you don't have that drill picked up far enough and these start to drag, this arm doesn't bend because it is cast iron. It will simply crack and break. So um, it can be an issue because the length of this drill makes it really hard to see the back end of your press wheels when you're making, when making a turn. On the Genesis, it's really easy. Everything's really compact. It's right there. You know when your press wheels are off the ground. This one, it's a little bit harder. So if you do end up dragging uh, too much and this ends up catching on the ground, um, you can break um, that cast iron arm um, and then you have your, yourself a, a row unit with no press wheel on the back. So one of the downfalls of the length of this is it is hard to see and you run the risk of, of breaking that off. Other than that, um, pretty good closing wheel system uh, on both of them. Um, just remembering that you got the cast iron arms on this, you got the bearing issues on, on the Genesis. But um, again, when they're, when they're functioning, they both work really well. Okay, just a couple of miscellaneous things we wanna cover here that we've added um, along the way just as creature comforts more than anything. One of which is the fill gauge that we added uh, on the Genesis drill. So on the Genesis, the way it comes from the factories, you've got these sight windows, and that's how you're supposed to see how your seed level is running. Works pretty decent as long as your seed is above here. Once you're below this level, it gets really hard to see from the cab um, to see where you're at. Plus, if it's really dusty, those windows get really clouded up and you really can't see anything. So we basically just copied the Great Plains drill. We made our own seed fill gauge um, right here. So now you can just see full to empty uh, right from the operator station, and it's, it's really no big deal. And um, like I said, it was a nice design from Great Plains. We just copied it and, and just homemade one uh, for the Genesis drill here. One of the things that you're gonna wanna address right away when you get your Genesis drill is gonna be this system um, that holds up your row unit, which is this chain. And on the top and the bottom, there's a D shackle and a pin that comes right from the factory. 
This has been a known issue. There's been a lot of consumers that have bought this drill and have had issues with that pin or the shackle or both failing. And when that fails, what happens is your entire row unit's gonna drop to the ground. And if you don't see that and you start turning it and you're dragging that, you're gonna break that row unit off and have a big mess on your hands. It's a really easy fix and we fixed it on ours before we ever put it in the field. So what we did is we took those pins out of the D-shackle that's in here. We replaced those pins with grade eight bolts um, and then we used blue Loctite and nylock nuts on there to secure that. And when we did that, we've never had an issue um, with these D-shackles uh, failing. So it's a known issue. There's forums that are all over the place on Facebook and online and other places where people are talking about this, but it's a really easy fix um, if you go ahead and just replace those with, with some bolts and get the pins out of there. You should never drop um, a row unit if you do that. Okay, as far as modifications that we've made on the Great Plains drill, I wanna point out a few things right here on the front end. Um, one of the things that we noticed right out of the chute when we got this is this center drive wheel has a sprocket um, that was exposed. So if you've got some wetter, heavier ground, what ends up happening is the mud and dirt, and everything wants to collect around this sprocket and then skip the chain off. So what we did is something really simple. We just added um, this steel guard that goes and covers this piece here to keep that mud and debris from getting up in there and skipping your chain off. So that was a really big add and it saved us a lot of time in the field just making sure that that wasn't getting plugged up. The other thing that we ended up doing on here is the tensioners that come on the 606 NT. Um, if you have one of those, it probably doesn't look like this. We actually took all of these um, and, and modified them with parts from some of the bigger Great Plains drills um, because we were having issues with this chain coming loose and not holding tension the way that it should. Um, and so this system works a little bit better. We did have to make quite a few modifications and shim this to get it lined up and, and squared up in there, but it has worked um, quite, a bit, uh, quite a bit better for us. And these are parts that are available uh, from any Great Plains uh, dealer. The other thing we wanted to point out, it's a modification that we had to make on the Great Plains. I think it was after the second year, we're gonna end up doing the same thing on the Genesis drill, but it's where your, your top link hookup is on the hitch itself you're gonna see that these holes over time and just about every piece of equipment we own, whether it's our drills or discs or, or whatever it may be, you put enough acres on those, these are gonna to start to wear um, and egg out. And so what we did on this is we actually welded two pieces of hardened steel and then re-drilled these holes so that we'd had the egging issue stop. Um, so the, this is a little bit softer steel um, on these hitches. We're having this exact same issue on the, on the Genesis. It's not a, a knock on either of these. It happens in just about every piece of equipment we have and just about every piece of equipment that we own. You'll see that we've welded these hardened steel plates and then had those re-drilled to fit our top pin. So not an immediate issue. It's a, it's a wear and tear issue over time. Probably not going to happen until you've got hundreds of acres um, on your unit, but um, something to point out that we've uh, done on just about all of our pieces of equipment. All right, so in this video, we've covered a ton of ground. It's time to land this plane and get to a summary and uh, get out of here. So let's talk about um, the different categories we've talked about today. First, let's start with durability between the Genesis and the Great Plains. Um, the durability issue here is that the Great Plains drill is really built as a true agricultural piece of equipment. Most of the components are much heavier than the Genesis. We've had far fewer breakdowns with it. So we're going to give the edge in durability uh, to the Great Plains drill. If we look at plantability, both of these units do a really nice job uh, of planting. Um, there's some things we like about both of them. We've talked about that center drive wheel on the Great Plains not being very good uh, when it comes to hill country. We really like the way that the, uh, that the drive wheel system works uh, on the Genesis drill. When you get right down to it, if both drills are adjusted and set accordingly um, to, the, to, the, to uh, what you're trying to put in the ground, they're both gonna do really well. We're gonna call this one a draw, plantability between the Genesis and the Great Plains um, are both really good. I would say um, if you're planting a lot of acres, you might give a slight edge um, to the Great Plains because you're gonna go back to the durability issue. But for most food plotters doing limited numbers of acres, I would say it's a draw. Calibration, um, this is really a no-brainer. The Genesis drill wins this one hands down. Um, if you're looking for information on the calibration, go back. We did an entire video on calibration of both the Genesis and the Great Plains drill, but the Genesis is a much, much easier unit uh, to calibrate. When we look at tractor options, um, tractor options simply means how many different tractors can you use for both of these drills. 
The overall weight of the Great Plains drill and the length of that drill is harder on tractors and you're gonna to have to have bigger tractors and you're gonna have fewer options um, to run the Great Plains on for most food plotters. So I would say that there's a slight edge here. You're gonna have a few more tractor options uh, with the Genesis. When you look at overall maintenance, uh, again, this one uh, for us has been uh, pretty easy to, to make this determination. We've run both of these drills for hundreds and hundreds of acres. I will tell you, we've done a lot more maintenance on the Genesis drill than we've done on the Great Plains. And I would say uh, that the Great Plains is gonna win the maintenance debate um, all day long on that one. You're gonna have fewer maintenance issues to deal with than you will, I think, on, on the Genesis over the long term. In the short run, they're probably pretty close, but as things start to wear, you're gonna see that wear show up much quicker I think in the Genesis and you are in the Great Plains. Finally on price, um, the, the, when you look at the maintenance, when you start seeing those maintenance things wear out, the reason they're wearing out on the Genesis quicker is because those parts are not quite as sturdy as what you're going to see in the Great Plains. Subsequently, the Genesis is going to be a less expensive drill. Um, so when we look at the drills that um, we compared today, we've got a 606 Great Plains NT, which is a five foot drill. We have an eight foot Genesis drill. Those drills were roughly about the same price uh, when we bought them, but we got an eight footer for the same price as we got the Great Plains and a five footer. So um, you look at the initial cost, um, you're gonna be favoring the Genesis drill. Overall cost of ownership over the long haul, I guess this is gonna depend on the issues that you have. I think you're gonna spend more in maintenance on the Genesis than you are in the Great Plains. Um, I, would, I would suspect that those are going to start to even out uh, over time. So with that, I want to thank you for the time today. As always, we really appreciate the comments. Um, please uh, drop a comment below. We'll be glad to get to as many of those as we can answer your questions. If there's something that we need to expand on or some other information you'd like to see, let us know. We'll get a video together on that. Um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and good luck with your food planning uh, this coming year.